run. Just run. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So this is going to be a sales update today, um, but I've kind of thought of doing um, a little bit of a theme for this sales update and the theme is kind of going to be you can sell anything on eBay. Um, and obviously we've got to be aware of eBay policies and banned items and restricted items and stuff like that. But I wanted to kind of make people aware that you really can sell a huge variety of items on eBay and um, it's just really about getting involved. Now, of course, there's a few things that I stay clear of, like, you know, mainly clothing, although I, for whatever reason, still pick the odd item up because I have this weird... Uh, compulsion to still at least try my hand at it even though I do know I have very little passion in that field and also things like furniture I generally say stay away from although I think I have picked up a few items of furniture like very small items I think I picked up a stool once that came in an auction job lot definitely picked up a couple of chairs as well um, but yeah generally furniture stay away from as well but you really can sell just a huge range of items and it is a bit of a shame that I can't actually look back through my entire sales history because if I could do that and I could really uh, pick out some odd and interesting sales, I think that would explain my point um, even better really. Now, I know there are services out there. Uh, what's it called? Um, oh, I don't know the name of the service, but I know there's one service out there that allows you to look back um, over the three months uh, sales history on eBay can't remember the name of it now but it definitely is a service out there that, that does that but anyway so these are just going to be sales over the past week week and a half as usual um, but I want to actually focus your attention on the variety of items because um, you know a lot of the time I do actually forget um, because it's quite normal to me the variety of items I sell and the different items I sell but I actually forget how m how many different items I, I sell so um, just focus on the different varieties of items hopefully you'll get a little bit of inspiration for some of the items you could pick up and uh, hopefully this video gives you a little bit of an idea of, of trying to expand your horizons and pick up different things, pick up new things, try different things out because of course that's what I've done to get the variety of stuff that I, that I now sell. Um, it's not come from uh, just all successes in terms of um, just staying in one niche and, and kind of learning loads about that one niche and being very successful in it. I've kind of just jumped all over the place, made some mistakes, and then that's how I've learned and picked up the, the knowledge to be able to sell, or the confidence, I should say, not necessarily knowledge, but the confidence in which I can now sell a larger variety of items. So, without further ado, and with that being said, and with that in mind, that sort of focus in mind, let's get on with this sales update. So, as I say, sales from maybe the last week and a half, something like that. Um, so, first off, we've got this Jurassic World Claire and Stegosaurus figure. Uh, this is by Mattel and it's a brand new and sealed figure set. Now, I picked this up. I did a little bit of retail arbitrage, jumped outside my comfort zone a little bit with RA because generally when I do RA, I only pick up Lego. I exclusively go for Lego because that's what I kind of... I, I feel I somewhat know that. I mean, I'm not saying I'm an expert in picking up Lego or anything. I'm certainly pretty proficient at it, um, but I'm not going to say I'm an expert or anything at that. Um, but certainly... Um, other things I, I get a little bit outside my comfort zone on. I get a little bit, um, oh, should I, am, I, am I right picking this up kind of thing uh, when it comes to RA. So I picked this up. I paid a fiver for it. I actually picked up another couple alongside it. And I was hoping to get around this price for it. I think I said in the whole video, hopefully I'll get about £15 plus postage, maybe a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I got £15 plus my postage on that. So considering it, considering it was RA, obviously you are going to take a slightly lower margin 
Sergeant Will Arre. Um, I'm more than happy with that sale there. Uh, and it was pretty cool figure set there. Maybe if, um, you know, I didn't list it and I held out till Christmas before listing it, maybe I could have got 20 quid, maybe even a bit higher. But I was happy just to whack it on and get some money back now for it. So that's that one there. So next, you know, moving away from those figures and moving into some uh, a completely different niche, uh, we've got this uh, large um, vintage sort of cut glass uh, water jug um, with like sort of an in inscribed design. Really, I don't know, maybe it's an acid etch design. Maybe that would have been a better keyword to put. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I've now packaged this jug up, so I'm not I'm not sure to, to be able to properly look at it. But maybe it was an acid etch design, so obviously maybe that could have gone in the title there. Um, but you can see here, $12.99 plus $3.49 postage. Pretty, you know, pretty standard price there. Um, but again, it just draws on that idea of selling different items, selling new items, jumping outside your comfort zone. Now, glassware for me is always a very, very tricky one. I don't know what I'm doing in the niche particularly. You know, the certain standard items I can pick up and I know I'm going to get X amount for. Um, the certain decanters and stuff, if it's got a label on or a brand name, things like that, that I can research quite easily and know what I'm doing with. But when it comes to actual, you know, higher end glassware that maybe you can't necessarily see like a, like an inscribed uh, signature or anything on it, or you maybe have to look at the pattern to be able to um, understand the maker, things like that, I'm not, I, I, I can't do yet. You know, I might be able to one day, but I can't identify glassware in that specific way. Um, but certainly everyone can just get involved and sell uh, you know, more standard glassware or glassware that has little names on it. You know, usually they have a little label or a stamp of some sort on, on a decanter. Everyone can do that. Everyone can get involved with that and uh, and make some money. And, you know, there's plenty of decanters that are worth 30, 40, 50 pound um, that you will find in charity shops occasionally or uh, auctions specifically as well or car boots um, for fairly cheap and you can make a good margin on them. So, yeah, that's that one there. Next, moving on to some ceramic so again slightly different niche not too dissimilar from glassware obviously still in that realm of antiques um but yeah 49.99 plus my postage for these vintage royal albert uh, old country roses pattern ceramic teacups now you may be thinking oh maybe you could have got a little bit more for them well the reason i went a little bit lower i know some people may have charged an extra 10 maybe even held out for an extra 20 quid or something i don't know whether you're gonna see it terribly well on some of these photos maybe it's towards the end here um you can see on most of the plates here the sources and stuff um the kind of gilting or the, the the gold around it is kind of i don't know how to describe it really it's kind of like dissolving away in one respect there um and that was on that was the same for pretty much all of the teacups there was also some wear to the teacups the, the gilding around there there was also some marks as well you can see um, to the backs of the tea, uh, the, some of the sauces and stuff. Um, so, and there was a little bit more. I don't know whether it's gonna be uh, you're gonna be able to see it too well on the photos, but I did describe it in the description. There was wear to these items. They weren't in perfect condition, um, so that's why I end up going a little bit lower. But still, I got a decent price for the six there um, for forty nine ninety nine plus my postage. Now I actually had these in my lockup. Um, oh, I didn't actually say on that glass. Obviously, that would have just cost me one or two quid in an auction job lot, not a lot at all. Um, now I had these in my lockup for ages, so I don't know what these cost me. I know they came in an auction job lot. But I can't remember which one. I mean, I know it was um, a... Uh, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Like, it was a job lot with actually a, a few different tea sets in. But I can't remember the cost to it or anything like that. But... I, I would bet my money that that clears the entire money from the job lot uh, just out of this one sale. So pretty happy with that there. Um, and yeah, that was a nice sale there. So next we've got some more sealed figures. So again, going back to that range of, you know, sealed figures, action figures, etc. Now these actually... Um, I'm selling on behalf of someone else. I am selling quite a lot of action figures for this person. Actually, now, I don't normally do the whole selling it on behalf of someone else kind of thing because in the past, it's been... Uh, it can get a little bit messy. It can get a little bit... Um, I don't know, just messy, really. You know, I mean, obviously... 
I'm doing these on spreadsheets, so I'm pulling a spreadsheet up, I'm typing in uh, individual sales, and then obviously I'm, I'm getting a net profit out of that from the spreadsheet, and then what I'm doing is obviously um, giving them their money and then me taking my cut as well. Um, but it can just get a little bit messy. Um, I don't particularly like doing the whole, um, you know, selling things on behalf of other people because you know, I like my PayPal and I like to know what's in my PayPal, etc. what's mine. And when, you know, you're selling things on behalf of someone else, it can, you kind of have to be a bit more organized with that. And I'm not a very organized person in that respect. Um, but I couldn't pass up on these, on doing this kind of deal and selling them on behalf of this person because the, the, some of the figures are absolutely brilliant. You can see two of these have sold for $49.99 a piece. Um, you know, brilliant, brilliant prices on them. Um, I actually sold the, the two to one individual person as well. So that totaled over 100 quid for one sale. Um, now, of course, I'm not getting all of that money, um, but I couldn't refuse passing up uh, on this opportunity because they're just so cool items, and they're, they were very easy to list as well. Uh, all of them were brand new and sealed, so, you know, it was it was a pretty uh, good move on my part at the end of the day. Um, but as I say, I don't really like doing it, and moving forward, um, if ever something like this comes my way again, I will definitely be assessing it, and if I don't want to do it, then I'm not going to do it. I'm just simply going to say, sorry, I don't do that. If um, I think that the items are good and that they're going to sell quick and that they're easy to deal with and that my cut or my percentage that I'm getting is pretty solid, then I'm going to say, yes, I'll do it, you know? And obviously, I can share with you the sales. I can share with you the spreadsheet. I can tell you exactly uh, the numbers uh, broken down in terms of gross profit, net profit, etc. So that then they know they're happy um, and I know, obviously, I'm happy as well. So anyway, that was that one. So again, moving in, uh, in that realm of sort of sealed figures and stuff i would highly recommend you get involved with picking up sealed figures they are so cool to deal with um so next moving completely out of that niche we go into kind of the art niche or the paintings engravings niche uh, with this vintage market cross and conduit um at saint albums framed engraving H hertfordshire yeah hertfordshire i was i was thinking that was herefordshire but is it hereford no, Hertfordshire, Hertfordshire, right. So, um, this went for 29 plus my postage. It did go pretty quickly, so maybe I could have got an extra 5 or a tenner for this. So, I think I shot myself in the foot a little bit with this one. But it's kind of hard to price these things, because you, you just really have to make up a price. And I would encourage on certain circumstances, if you don't know what to price something at, and... Um, you know, you, you're really unsure, I would just encourage you to go that extra five or that extra tenner because you can always come down, but if it sells like really, really quickly, you've not got any chance of putting the price up or anything. That's it, sold. So, um, yeah, with that one, that kind of happened to me on this one. However, I got this in a job lot of engravings. You may have seen it in a haul video. I'm not sure whether that haul video will have been released yet. Uh, maybe it won't have done actually at this point, so maybe you'll see it in the future. Um, but I got this in a haul video with a load of other, en other engravings for £10 plus commission at the auction. So this was the first sale to go. This was the first one to go. And I've already cleared my money on that job lot and profit. And I've probably got another 10, maybe 11, no, yeah, about 10 engravings to sell. Maybe 8 to 10, something like that. Um, so yeah, more than happy with that anyway because I'm in profit now. And I've still got like 8 to 10 engravings to sell. Some of which I believe are on for 25, 30 quid. So yeah, really, really happy with that nice little job lot there and no one was bidding on it at the auction so again jump outside your comfort zones sell different things get into these different niches because some of these different niches people totally avoid and that leaves obviously it open for other people to get involved so and i know that certain people won't want to sell paintings certain people won't want to get involved with these sorts of niches um, but some of the opportunity are there, you know, in certain different niches, some opportunities there. And, uh, you know, if you feel like you've got at least some passion for these items, you may as well get involved and jump into it. But I would say that if you don't have any passion for these items, maybe it's not your thing and maybe you, you shouldn't sell it, you know, because you're not going to put the effort in. Um, but next, we're going to move on to another um, sort of action figure. So we've had a few action figures up to now. So, 
yeah, maybe it's not too varied. I should have maybe included a couple of other different things. Um, but yeah, this is a Doctor Who um, BBC Classic Ice Warrior figure. Now, of course, this is a loose figure, so, you know, you can sell action figures sealed, you can sell them loose. Generally, if they're sealed, they're going to be worth a little bit more. Obviously, it depends on certain figures and stuff, but generally, I would say pretty much all figures are going to be worth more sealed than they are loose. Um, but, I mean, some figures you just can't pick up sealed, you know, they're that rare that you, you'll only find them loose. Um, but, yeah, so I got £12.60 for this. Probably originally had this up for £12.99, and it's just come down. Um, and then three forty nine postage. Obviously, this was just in one of the Doctor Who job lots. Selling through these really, really nicely now. Um, and, yeah, I would... Uh, I really need to actually get um, buying some more of these two figures, but I just can't seem to find them at the moment. Um, I'm, and, you know, if they're not there, if they're not available, if the opportunity isn't there, then I can't really pick up on those opportunities. Um, but I am still looking, and I'm sure at some point very soon an opportunity will come my way and I'll be able to pick up some more of those. So next, we're moving back to ceramics, but this is slightly different ceramics. This is... Um, obviously, like, Dalton figures, you know, figurines, things like that, opposed to, um, sort of tea wares and stuff. So this is this Royal Dalton Southern Bell, H Southern Bell HN3174, small lady figurine, uh, $14.99 plus postage on this. Really, really quick sale, went within a few days. Um, I got this from... It was, I, yeah, I don't know the exact lot, actually, but it was it was a lot from my most recent auction haul. Um, I think it was... I think it was a lot where I picked up some jugs and so other ceramics and stuff, and then this was in here. Um, this just goes towards paying for the lot, because I think I picked that lot up for around 20 to £25 plus commission, so I won't be in profit on that specific job lot yet, because this is my first sale from it, um, but obviously it just goes towards help paying for that job lot, so yeah, 14 99 on uh, this one here, so pretty cool, pretty happy with that one, next, something completely different again, this is an Airfix starter set, it's like a model set, um, obviously brand new and sealed, you can, well, I was going to say you can pick these up when they're not brand new and sealed, I suppose you can with some of the model sets that, um, you know, maybe not aren't including paints or something like that. I know I've seen a few people sell model sets that have been opened and stuff, but yeah, I suppose it's a little bit hard. It may be a little bit harder to sell, but this one was brand new and sealed. Again, something different to sell, something, um, you know, in, a, in another niche again. Um, pretty cool, pretty interesting. People do like these model sets. Um, you know, 16 99 on this one, 17 quid. I paid £4 from a charity shop. I was umming and ahhing whether to pick it up at 4 quid. And I decided to go for it in the end. And it probably took about two weeks to sell. So from 4 quid into 17 quid within two weeks... I'm pretty happy that I picked it up. Some decent profit in that one, obviously. Um, and again, you know, it's something that's not too hard to package up either. Not too hard to list because it's brand new and sealed. Um, so that's pretty interesting there, that little model set. Uh, next, we've got something completely different. Uh, this is obviously, uh, comes under the kind of wooden items. I suppose, treen? I'm not sure. May maybe treen, maybe not treen. I'd have to... I need to Google what treen actually means again, um, but I think it's just, it, it's treen just not any carved wooden items or things made out of wood, so I think it might fall under treen. I've not put treen in the title here, obviously, um, but two times vintage carved wooden seahorse ornaments, home decor pieces. It's always good to put, like, home decor and things like that into these titles because it seems like... Um, I don't know, it just seems when I put home decor into certain titles, they seem to sell quite quickly, so I don't know, maybe it is that, but yeah, something completely different again, you know, people, I mean, these aren't, these aren't big things, they're, you can see they're what, uh, 15 centimetres tall, but they're very, very thin, there's, there's not a lot to these actually, um, and you can see for 12 99 plus my postage, really, really happy with that, that's a really strong price for these items, but a lot of people would overlook these. A lot of people would think, ah, they're not, they're literally, you know, two or three quid on eBay, they would be, or maybe five quid at maximum. 
But don't overlook these kind of things. Look into them. You know, again, it's something different to sell. It's something unusual. And sometimes these things can do okay. Now, of course, they are only very bread and butter items. But a lot of the time, it's these bread and butter items that keep the business going. As I've said for so much of the time, it can become... A little bit of a chore to list bread and butter items all the time. So I do like to try and vary it up if I can with some higher value items in there as well. But at the end of the day, ultimately, it's those bread and butter items that are going to see you through. And, um, you know, so you want to get involved and don't di don't um, disregard these kind of things as something that, that aren't worth anything because they simply are. So, you know, these I'm not just talking about these seahorses in particular, but certain other variants of these wooden, like carved wooden animals and carved wooden items and stuff can be can be worth money. So it's an interesting niche to, to look into. And then finally, again, something completely different. We've got uh, this Thomas Dam Vintage 1986 green haired Troll Doll. Now, um, some of these trolls can be worth some good money, some of these vintage ones. Um, you can see here I got £10.58 for this plus my postage. Very, very old listing this one. I had it on for quite a while. Probably had it on at higher than that originally, maybe twelve ninety nine, something like that. Um, but I was still happy just to wait it out. Didn't take up much space in storage or anything like that. Um, and I'm not, I wasn't really bothered it, of it being on my listings for ages. Um, so yeah, pretty happy with that one. Um, Ten pound fifty eight plus my postage. Interesting item, little bit different item. Um, you know, again, some of these. Um, figures or some of these um, toys and stuff you might have to gain a little bit of knowledge in or expand your horizons a little bit um, if you want to sell them for a decent price or sell them effectively because sometimes if you don't know what you're doing and you, you buy a job lot of stuff sometimes you can maybe shoot yourself in the foot and, and not price them or, or not get as much money as maybe you thought you could um, or maybe well not maybe you thought you could or maybe not get as much money um, because maybe you've not got that knowledge there or you're not willing to do a bit more research or whatever. So you've got to be um, making sure you're doing plenty of research with these items. But also, like, people, when they're in, let's say when they're in, like, uh, action figures job lot, uh, sorry, when they're in the action figures niche, they generally stick to, like, certain ones. They don't necessarily broaden their horizons with action figures or broaden their horizons with certain toy figures and things like that. They generally stick to certain ones that they like selling, etc. But just broaden your horizons a little bit. Maybe you sell, uh, you know, Spider-Man figures and Batman figures, etc. Um, but maybe at the car boot, there's not many of them available one week. But you see a lot of these vintage troll dolls or maybe you see a, a lot of My Little Ponies or whatever, um, and you think, you know what, there's not much opportunity in what I really, really want to sell this week, but I'm going to expand my horizons a little bit, and I'm going to sell something a little bit different. It's in a similar sort of vein or a similar sort of niche to, to me anyway, um, but it's just something a little bit different, and it'll obviously help me uh, gain a little bit more knowledge for the future as well. So, yeah, just... Um, you know, expand your horizons with that a little bit if you are kind of just kind of in that same routine of, of sticking with the same items and uh, and just get involved with different niches or different parts of the, the niche that you're already in. Um, so obviously, I hope this gave you a little bit of an idea of a few of the different items you can sell. Now, I know that this might not have been the most um, varied sales update ever, but this is a typical week for me, and then other weeks might be a bit more varied, other, other weeks might be a little bit more honed into one specific niche, you know, I might be selling uh, a lot of metalware one week for, what, for whatever reason, um, but certainly on a week-by-week -week basis, and if you look at it in an overall month or an overall 12 months, the amount of varied things that I sell is very, very interesting. It's very, very wide, um, and and I really do like that, and it, it gives me a lot of pleasure. And um, obviously, I've been able to expand knowledge in various different fields. So, you know, it, it's just interesting to get involved, and and you really can sell a lot of things on eBay. So take advantage of that if you do so want to. Um, you know, it's fine being specialized in one niche if that's what you like. Um, but I know that a lot of people, including myself, like to do different things, like to get involved selling different things. So, yeah, just embrace that and, and keep going with it and, and enjoy the ride of, of selling on eBay. And, 
you know, just think of all the cool things you've sold in the past or that you, you could sell in the future. It's, it's an interesting way of doing business that opposed to just selling like um, one thing for, forever and ever and ever, which as I say, there's nothing wrong with that. But for certain personalities, it can get a little bit more mundane for them, you know, so it's nice to expand that horizons. Anyway, I've probably rambled, I've probably double backed on myself or whatever the phrase is or repeated myself about six times there. So I'll leave it there for this one, guys. If you did like the video, then please do give it a like down below. If you haven't already, then please do subscribe to the channel. If uh, you have any comments, questions or queries about any of the sales that you've seen here today, please do drop them down below. Check out all the links in the description, all that stuff. You know what to do. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys. I'll give you what I got The alcohol of that is flowing wild So grab yourself a can of mine